Hi guys, welcome to Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Please subscribe if you don't mind. Uh, today's video is on uh, members of rock bands that did not get along, uh, that actually fought a lot. Uh, and just so you know, I'm very jet lagged, very tired, so let's just jump into it, okay? Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel uh, met as school children and began performing together in the 1950s. Early on, though, they began having problems. Garfunkel was deeply hurt when Simon took a solo deal. Several years later, Simon was upset with Garfunkel for choosing to act in a movie instead of making a new album. They broke up and reunited several times over the years, but they kept running into the same problem. They didn't like each other. Uh, you know, the music essentially stopped in 1970, Simon told NPR in 2016. You know, I mean, quite honestly, we don't get along. So it's not like it's fun. If it was fun, I'd say, okay, sometimes we'll go out and sing old songs in harmony. That's cool. But when it's not fun, you know, and you're going to be in this tense situation, that I have a lot of musical areas that I'd like to play in. So that'll never happen again. That's it. Fleetwood Mac, uh, Stevie Nicks, and Lindsey Buckingham. Lindsay uh, and uh, Stevie were in a relationship when they first joined Fleetwood Mac, but Nix admitted they were on the verge of a breakup. They stayed together for the sake of their careers, but their fighting led to the breakup shortly into the time with the band. After they split, the two musicians wrote pointed songs about each other. They would have screaming matches in the studio ahead of recording sessions, and Buckingham once even threw a guitar at Nix during a performance. The pair left Fleetwood Mac at different points, but eventually rejoined and seemed dedicated uh, to their relationship. In 2018, though, the band fired Buckingham after Nick saw him uh, <clears throat> roll his eyes at her during a speech. Buckingham blames Nick for his firing, but uh, yeah, he denies this. Following an exceedingly difficult time with Lindsay at Music Cares in New York in 2018, I decided for myself I was no longer willing to work with him, she told Rolling Stone. I would publicly reflect on many reasons why, and perhaps I will do that someday in a memoir, but suffice it to say, we should start in 1968 and work up to 2018 with a litany of very precise reasons why I do not work with him. And of course, the Beatles, John Lennon and Paul McCartney. By the time the Beatles broke up in 1970, all four members were sick of working with each other. Most well-known of these feuds is between former uh, writing partners uh, Lennon and McCartney. When the Beatles broke up, McCartney sued the band to wrest control from manager Alan Klein, uh, which made many of their issues public. Lennon and McCartney began writing barbed songs about each other, including How Do You Sleep. Lennon also took shots at McCartney's solo career and wrote him angry letters. Outside of their musical and business differences, Lennon was furious with McCartney for how he treated Yoko Ono when they met. This kept the two former band members fighting with each other for much of the early 70s. Toward the end of Lennon's life, he and McCartney reconciled. Reconciled, however, when they were trying to make music together, they could get along. Pink Floyd, David Gilmore, and Roger Waters. In 1985, Roger Waters left Pink Floyd after years of butting heads with David Gilmore. Waters began legal drama, believing the band could not continue in his absence. In 1987, though, he settled out of court, allowing Gilmore and Nick Mason to continue Pink Floyd. Though they were no longer working together, the tension between Waters and Gilmore did not abate. They reunited over the years, but only for single shows. When the band was offered $150 million for a reunion tour, they turned it down. Why on earth would anyone think that we do... Uh, why on earth anyone thinks what we do now... Uh, would have anything to do with Waters is a mystery to me. Gilmore told Rolling Stone in 2014, Roger was tired of being in the pop group. He is very used to being the sole power behind his career. Uh, the thought of him coming into something that was uh, has any form of democracy to it, he just wouldn't be good at that. Besides, I was in my 30s when Roger left the group. I'm 68 now. It's over half a lifetime away. We really don't have that much in common anymore. The feud continues to flare up, even rearing its head as recently as 2023 when Gilmore's wife called Waters anti-Semitic and a Putin apologist on Twitter. It seems like the band's members fighting will keep them from ever reuniting. Uh, the Ramones, Joey and Johnny Ramone. When the Ramones left the stage after a concert, they often would exchange a word with one another. 
The relationship between Johnny and Joey Ramone was particularly tense per Rolling Stone. Uh, they barely spoke once in the band's 22-year history. They disagreed politically. Joey was liberal, while Johnny was outspoken Republican. Uh, but their relationship hit a point of implosion when Joey's girlfriend left him for Johnny. In response, Joey wrote the song, The KKK Took My Baby Away, about Johnny. Their relationship never improved either. After Joey's death in 2001, Johnny refused to attend a funeral. I was in California, he said, per Rolling Stone adding, I was going to travel all the way to New York, but I wouldn't have gone anyway. I wouldn't want him going, coming to my funeral, and I wouldn't want to hear from him if I were dying. I'd only want to see my friends and let me die and leave me alone. There you go. A lot of it sounds kind of petty to me, especially Stevie Nicks having uh, him fired because he rolled his eyes at her. <laughs> Grow up. Uh... I'm not a Stevie Nicks fan, if you can't tell. Um, anyway, it's all I have for you. Uh, very tired, very jet-lagged. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. Please, please, please subscribe. Um, have a great day. God bless you, and I'll be praying for you.